So what I have here is a prototype Tizen device. Uh, this is running on an ARM chip. Uh, this is the reference device that Samsung is handing out to developers um, to get them to test applications for Tizen. This is just an initial release of Tizen. Um, there are not many core apps bundled as yet. I mean, there's not even a camera app, so this is very, very bare bones. But this is what Tizen uh, represents right now. Again, this is reference design. It's just been put together uh, for, for developers to test out. But what I'm really interested in is in the UI. Now, since Samsung has had a lot to do with how Tizen's come about, you will see that the UI has borrowed extensively from DutchWiz, the skin that Samsung kind of puts on Android, and is even similar to what Pada looks like. So this is, again, uh, the pull-down notification area, very like... Uh, Android, uh, like TouchWiz, that there's a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, vibration and rotation toggle, and then you can push it up. Uh, this is your home button. That there's this only this one dedicated home button, which brings you back to the home screen from wherever you are. Otherwise, you can hit this button, and it'll do the same purpose. So there's a possibility of making an absolutely button-free device. Uh, the core applications are are fairly simple. Uh, again, that. All of them made in HTML5, and uh, this is the first release. So, and this is not even proper hardware. So, I am not sure if it represents the speed and performance of Tizen as such. But this is what we have running. Uh, a long press of this button uh, brings up this this task switcher, which lets you switch between apps. Uh, has a history of the apps that you've recently used and all the applications that are currently running so you can kill an application at a time, free up some RAM or you can choose to kill all applications uh, this device is using uh, 1024 pixel by 720 pixel so about an HD screen um, and uh, so Tizen is very much a high-end platform it will possibly have uh, pretty expensive high-end devices coming on Tizen uh, because if, if they're using HD screens and things like that it's definitely not targeted towards lower end um, in terms of what else we can see there's the settings menu which is again very similar to what we've previously seen Samsung do on their devices so there's uh, tethering support built out of box uh, location services you can this device doesn't have a sim and there are other options uh, there's always a back key that pops up in the right hand corner uh, apart from that you can possibly put accounts in so you have support for Samsung, MSN, Exchange, Google, Facebook, Twitter so that's a pretty extensive list of services that are supported uh, in Tizen and uh, let's get back to where we were mm. Okay, so there's support for NFC as well, and then uh, you can choose uh, contact and even synchronization. There's push, push notification built out of the box as well, which is very nice. So possibly you won't really need dedicated applications as far as Facebook and Twitter are concerned because the phone should be able to handle all of them. Again, I haven't tried this, but... Uh, I think that is the intent Samsung has had. Uh, the dialer again looks very similar to the Android uh, Samsung dialer. Contacts, log, and you have a list of contacts. You can tap one to go in. Uh, you can even choose to edit that. Uh, there's support for a bunch of fields. You can put them in. And this button takes you back to the home screen. Uh, the icon for the gallery is very similar to what Samsung's done in the past. Uh, so, this is the gallery application. And fairly basic. Uh, I don't think you can use this to edit applications. But the good thing is that they have support for places. So, it'll, uh, sh your photos will show up on the map, which is always a nice thing and you can tag them as well uh, there's a dedicated music client again uh, 
nothing exceptional which we haven't seen. A quick look at the web browser running on this Tizen reference device. Uh, this device has the best HTML5 score, so if you just quickly pop over to that website, as you can see, 408 points with 15 bonus points, which is exceptional for any web browser. But what I'm also keen to see is how that translates uh, into general web browser performance. Again, this is a reference design, so this is not uh, what you should expect the final version to be. But uh, I have the handle blog open, and as you can see, uh, it seems to be very smooth. Uh, the scrolling is fast, and since this is an HD screen, uh, the text is nice and crisp. Uh, the colors display really nicely, and it's still very smooth. Uh, I you can't really you can zoom in, but there's no automatic text reflow. But even that zooming in is fairly fast. Uh, there's hardly any checkered boxes which you which people generally come to expect. Uh, apart from that, uh, let's see how. YouTube or some of those other websites YouTube uh, there's searches in built so you can quickly just start typing the name and uh, let's see whichever video comes up watch watch video and uh, there it is so it starts playing very quickly uh, it's playing in pretty exceptional quality so there's HQ uh, playback right out of the box, even with the web uh, version of YouTube. Um, it's fairly fluid, but it is uh, right now not really up to uh, the standards consumers would expect. And that is why this is just the initial release. This is not even a prototype device. It's purely a reference design for the developers to check their applications out. Uh, so consider it uh, a very much a very first look. Uh, this will possibly in no way even represent the kind of devices that Tizen comes out with, but it is a good indicator of uh, what to expect in terms of the UI.